You are an unusual man. I was talking to Peter Gammons about you just now. Um, uh, the, just a, your sports uh, business career alone, incredible. But if we go back further, your life, Forrest Gump-like, kind of intersected <laughs> with some rather important political figures. I'm going to ask you about two of them. Okay. The first, Princeton University, you played basketball with Bill Bradley. I what was it like? Tell us about that experience. Uh, well, it was a great experience. I was a lowly, insignificant sophomore when Bradley was a senior carrying us on his back to the Final Four. Uh, his, uh, I was one of the early fundraisers for him, I remember, in the late 70s uh, when, we, uh, when he ran for, for office. But he was, uh, he was a, uh, a, apart from the rest of us, he was a different, a different player yeah. and, uh, and a, a, still a very good guy. A very good guy. Um, the other person whose past you crossed uh, with was Hillary Clinton. Yes. At Yale Law School. Yes. And then in Washington, D.C. Right. I gather you liked her a little better once you started working with her than when you were in school. I knew her, her. I knew her better when I worked with her, and yeah. she was uh, indefatigable. Yeah. We, we all worked pretty hard. It was Watergate, and it was the impeachment, and it was... Uh, big and important stuff to us. We were just the first year out of law school, and uh, she had a work ethic uh, that was extraordinary. Did you, did you know President Clinton when you were at Yale Law School? Also? He was actually more of a peripheral guy. Yeah. He was not around so much. <laughs> Hillary was in the mainstream, and Bill was off in Texas uh, doing some political stuff. I, I assume because you guys are such uh, old friends, you'll be you'll be supporting her in this, in this uh, presidential well, election. Well, uh, I have supported Hillary in the past. Yeah. Let me say that. Ah, an artful <laughs> answer. Well yeah. done. Still an undecided voter. I want to continue a little bit of the tour of your past life, and that was when you worked with Edward Bennett Williams, who's been called a mentor of yours. He's the original super lawyer, I think. Yeah. But one of the most interesting things about his career is that everybody went to him, Democrats, Republicans. Right. He's truly bipartisan. When you look at the town now, do you see that ever happening again or somebody who could represent something like that? Well, I mean, the, the book about Edward Bennett Williams' life was called The Man to See. Right. And he was indeed the man to see, not just for legal problems or criminal problems, but also for just general advice on, uh, on life, general advice on, advice on the ways of Washington. And it's been a while since I've been in D.C. and with the, uh, and, uh, or in Baltimore with the Orioles. So yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I don't know. For me, I have a bias. I mean, he, my whole career in sports is directly attributable to him and the opportunities he gave me and the doors he opened for me. So uh, I don't ever think there'll be anyone quite like him, but that's a biased point of view. Now, as you know, you are kind of a baseball lifer now when you yeah. look at what happened with the Orioles here at the Red Sox. What's your take on the state of the game right now? You had the post-steroids era, the post sea league era. Where are we now with the game of baseball? Uh, the game is actually, I think, in, uh, in pretty good shape right now. I think there's a high level of competitive balance, which was one of the issues we were uh, uh, bothered by for some time. There was, uh, there is a, uh, the steroid era has passed. The uh, ninth commissioner, Bud Selig, and the tenth commissioner, Rob Manfred, I think, it, uh, determined to uh, eradicate that from the game and have done a great job uh, doing that. Um, I think that there is a popularity about the game uh, that certainly applies to, uh, to, to most of America, and we've made a major effort to do two things. One is to call all kids. It's the campaign we have it here at the Red Sox this year, calling all kids. To, to make the game younger and and reach out more to more more to kids, and the tenth commissioner uh, Rob Manford is uh, very determined to expand the international activities and horizons of baseball. So I think baseball is ready for another uh, another uh, uptick. Uh, I, I do believe, and I think it's uh, enduring in, in its uh, in its capacity to fill our summers. When we think you think about your career uh, on the baseball side uh, with the Orioles and then with the Red Sox, um, you saw a lot of change in the course of the sport. Um, yeah. you know, and you're, we were talking upstairs earlier about building Camden Yards, getting that done, yeah. and changing the way that the sports stadium, baseball stadiums looked across America. When you think about, I'm going to ask you about the Red Sox specifically in a second, but more broadly, how's the business of baseball changed in your oh, lifetime? Oh, it's changed dramatically. Uh, it's uh, been it's much larger than it used to be. It's much more professional than it used to be. Uh, the, it's much more sophisticated than it used to be. It used to be that the front office was filled with a few old buddies, high school buddies or fishing buddies right. of the owner. And, uh, and they, uh, something happened in the, uh, I would say, began in the 70s, perhaps with the uh, 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 labor movement, uh, bringing in some uh, good people and new ideas. And, uh, but it is a much, uh, much more... Um, uh, sophisticated approach to uh, business of sports. Well, when you guys arrived here, this ownership group, you, John Henry, the, all your other Tom colleagues, Warner. Tom Warner, 
you know, you guys encountered a situation that people now forget that the Red Sox were not this indomitable franchise. They've not had a great year this year, but you guys are a hugely successful business, yeah. um, a, a global brand in a lot of ways. That was not how it was when you got here. Right. What were the biggest challenges you faced when you arrived in Boston, and how did you overcome them to build this thing into what it is now? Well, one of the biggest challenges is where we're sitting right now, Fenway Park. Uh, the uh, the consensus of our fan base and of certainly of the media was that Fenway Park had seen its better days and it was time for uh, for a, a, a new ballpark uh, somewhere else in Boston right. and uh, uh, John Henry Tom Warner and I believed that uh, there was something magical special about Fenway Park now maybe because we had a different perspective coming from other baseball teams and uh, so we were determined to preserve and protect and enhance and improve Fenway Park that was a big challenge when we came here, the Red Sox uh, regularly were uh, bridesmaids, runners-up. In fact, my cell phone number is 2222, which I picked back then to remind me every day that the Red Sox were always finishing second to the Dam to the Yankees. Excuse me. <laughs> and and, uh, and um, so there was a there was a. I need assume to, your number now is the one one one. No, no, no. I've not been that uh, that that bold. <laughs> But uh, so it's, it, when we came here, we said we want to field a team that's worthy of the fan support. We want to preserve, protect, improve Fenway Park. We want to be active and aggressive marketers of this team. So it's not just Boston's team, but it's New England's team. It's the national team. It can be an international team. And, and, and fourthly, we wanted to be active in the charitable philanthropic activities right. of, of the club. And finally, as a throw-in, we said we were going to eradicate the curse of the Bambino. We said that on <laughs> December 21st, 2001, of our, our, at our very first press conference. And uh, three years, according to our astute business plan, uh, we, uh, we ended the... <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, two quick ones before you go. How did you get Dan Shaughnessy to write a bullet-pointed Why I Love Larry Lucchino column and which of your world championships is the favorite? Well, that's the, I know you the, can't the, the first question, I think, with Shaughnessy, it was just a question of balance. He had written so many bullet-point <laughs> items about what he did, didn't like about me and us that he was just trying, I guess there was a, 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 a feeble effort at uh, journalistic balance, <laughs> trying to write some uh, some nice things on the other side. I figured a bribe was actually what yeah, you no, no, no. said a B word. I think he had his tongue in his I think he had his tongue in his cheek that whole time. And you go 04? Uh, 04 will always be special. Uh, uh, 07 was special because we made uh, uh, some trades that the year for uh, Josh Beckett and for Mike Lowell and the year before. And um, it was nice to win. It, uh, we had a slogan. Any After we won in 04, our slogan was, any group of Schlemiel's can win once. Yeah. So we had to win it a second time. And 13 was really special as well because of the Boston Marathon. You just, asked a man, you just asked a man to choose among his children, and he yeah. refused to choose yeah. among his children. 